Well, good morning, church, and welcome. It is Wednesday. It is our uh, hump day, midweek. We have uh, made it through the storms of last week and uh, are are here again. Um, of course, if you're keeping your eye on the Atlantic, you see another storm approaching uh, at some point, probably in the next couple of weeks. But uh, we've made it through, and we are here again. We had some wonderful weather uh, afterwards, and hopefully cleanup was pretty minimal for all of y'all. Um, but we're we're entering into the fall. Uh, the this new um, time here at St. Jude's, kicking off some new studies, bringing on Anne Claire Gilliard as our youth minister here at St. Jude's. We're incredibly excited to have her joining us, and what that means for the youth ministry here to be meeting weekly. Um, I'm I'm really really excited for for not only our our kids that we've had coming regularly, but for their friends as well. Uh, for the impact it's going to have on this community. We are kicking off some other studies as well, and I wanted to just talk very briefly about that. Uh, next Wednesday will be our first Wednesday night fellowship and teaching. This coming Sunday kicks off the Sunday afternoon Bible study as well. It meets immediately after 10 o'clock church, lunch provided. Um, so we're, we're getting into that swing of things. Our homeschool co-op is going to be kicking off um, next Thursday as well. And, and you'll see more about that on, on social media to follow. There's a page that's been set up, and I'll, I'll share it with you all soon. Um, but anyway, we're, we're entering into this new season, these new ministries, these new opportunities for us to share the good news, share the gospel. And uh, I'm, I'm just really, really excited about that. Well, our Wednesday night fellowship and teaching, I, I'm going to talk about that now, and that's kind of what the focus of today's video is going to be. In the past, we've done kind of topical um, series. We've talked about missions and evangelism. We we talked about spiritual gifts. Uh, we talked about uh, the miracles of Jesus kind of leading into some, some uh, prayer training. Um, and some of that is going to be happening as well on the side. Uh, but I wanted us to shift more to Scripture itself. And so after this season, I feel like we've been kind of preparing for this. We're just going to dive into the Bible. And so this fall, we're going to tackle the book of Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews is, is one of those New Testament books. It's, it's not like the other epistles. You know, we have our Gospels. Uh, we have Acts, which is a historical narrative of, of the early church and what took place. It's kind of part two to Luke's Gospel. Uh, and then we jump into Paul's epistles, letters that were written um, to the to the early church sites. James writes letters. John wrote some letters. Uh, even Peter wrote some letters. But we have this other book in the midst of that called Hebrews, and we don't know the author of it. It's it's fairly clear that the target audience is people that understand Jewish descent, but it's also written. Uh, in such a way that, that Greek uh, Gentile culture would understand some of the historical practices of Judaism that led up to a Messiah, Redeemer, King um, coming, uh, who, who also takes that role as high priest, the great high priest. And we hear all of that referenced uh, in our worship of Jesus. Um, Hebrews is where we begin to see some of that just really uh, being explained for us. But it is a difficult book. Uh, it's a it's a challenging one. It kind of this idea came to me in conversation with some other folks in the church um, as they were having discussions about what certain things meant. And and I said, you know, why don't we wait and try and instead of trying to do a small group study on on Hebrews, uh, let's do a bigger study on it as a church. And so that's why we're going to do it for Wednesday night fellowship. Now there may be some other small groups that are going to kind of tackle it alongside us at the same time, and that's great. Um, but, but I found a, a good study to kind of guide us through the book of Hebrews. A couple little nuggets in that book that I want to share with you real fast. Um, and just kind of a, a synopsis of, of the book first. It is kind of covering some of the ancient uh, Jewish traditions. It talks a lot about sacrifice and the priestly order um, and, and some of the old traditions, but not necessarily particularly the Jerusalem temple traditions. It's actually more the wilderness traditions uh, pre-establishment of temple worship. Um, so it's going back to when God spoke to his folks in the wilderness and they were worshiping him uh, in the tabernacle. And so it's really cool to actually go back that far um, and, and see how God was working through his people then to prepare for them uh, prepare them for the coming of his son. And it, Jesus, of course, then is, is put in that high priest position. Um, we see that through the order of Melchizedek, and, and we'll talk through what that means. Uh, and then, of course, we, we see 
uh, faith being defined uh, in the book of Hebrews as well, which I think is a, it gives us a wonderful definition. So again, I want to share just a couple little nuggets with you um, real quick from the book of Hebrews. I'm trying to mark them with my hand as I, as I speak to you. But in the beginning, it says, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in the last days, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. And again, I think that's just a, that's, that's the opening two verses of the book of Hebrews. God is telling us right off the bat, I spoke to you through prophets, through you know people appointed by God to come and, and speak the good news, to prepare the way. But in these latter days, most recently, he has spoken to us through Jesus. And now we have the Son of God, God himself's word, given to us, uh, not by a prophet, not by, by some other representative, but by himself, by his son. And uh, so again, that's, that's the power that this book opens with, is this is what is happening. Many times, in many ways, God has spoken, God has continued to speak, and God sent his son to speak directly. Uh, later on, as I mentioned, it, it kind of goes through for several chapters, the whole priestly side of things, and we'll talk about that in the study. But when we get to 11, chapter 11, we have this incredible definition of faith. And it talks a lot about by the faith of Abraham. Um, and, and we see kind of Abraham being the father of Judaism in many ways. Uh, but, but it is through faith in that family that then the word is spread. But it begins with this incredible definition. It says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For it is the for for by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. And then it goes on by faith, beginning with Cain and Abel, and then on through there to Abraham, and and again how faith has progressed since then. I, I, but that beginning definition, I think, is is incredible. Uh, and then later on, we see Jesus as the perfecter of our faith. So yes, Abraham had faith. We see faith from the beginning. We see how God created from the beginning. But then when we get uh, to chapter 12, we see how Jesus becomes the perfecter of that faith. So this will be a key point for us as we go through this study on Wednesday nights. It says, therefore, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, and that's all the folks that were talked about in chapter 11, all the folks who had this strong faith, Abraham, Moses, David, all these people in the Old Testament, were surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. That kind of becomes, I think, a, a peak moment, uh, a climactic moment in the book of Hebrews. And again, we will discuss all of that uh, in this Wednesday night study. But again, fun, exciting book, not one that we typically preach through. Uh, it's 13 chapters, not one that, that we typically have, have even turned to in the lectionary readings um, to preach on, uh, but but a, a good book for us to know and to kind of establish some groundwork for our faith. So I'm excited about this Wednesday night study that kicks off not today, uh, but next week. We'll have dinner um, 6 to 7.30 as has been our typical routine for that. Um, and, and we'll hear from some other folks throughout our time together on Wednesday nights how uh, their faith has impacted their lives as well. So as I had you all throughout the summer working on kind of your, your spiritual journeys, talking about um, the roller coaster of life, the ups and downs you've had, uh, this is where I might ask you to, to, for five minutes, speak to that. Give us an example. Uh, tell us a little bit about your story and how God has worked in your life. So if you're coming on Wednesday nights, we typically have great audience participation, um, but I will, with notice, ask you to maybe also speak for a few minutes um, yourselves as well. Again, I'm, I'm excited for this. As we close in prayer today, uh, I'm going to use the collect for holy thought, uh, prayer for holy thought, that our thoughts, our minds would be turned towards the Lord, that we'd be directed to his word, to prayer, to relationship with him. 
And so, O God, without whose beauty the goodness and goodness our souls are unfed, without whose truth our reason withers, consecrate our lives to your will, giving us such purity of heart, such depth of faith, and such steadfastness of purpose, that in time we may come to think your own thoughts after you, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen.